Well, hey guys, and welcome to another Gabin episode. So in the last episode, we kind of figured out the outside situation. I mean, it was kind of a huge episode and I just want to get it over with. That's why I just jam backed it whole into a one video. And like you guys said, I also think it looks great. Somebody already parked their stuff here. That's fantastic. What the crap is that supposed to be? Oh. You know, I know what this is, but uh, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Stop rotting on my deck, bro. So in this episode, uh, we'll be going inside. And hopefully we'll achieve something there. But before we do that, we have to mourn a loss, sadly. So when I was working on the boulder wall episode, Something kind of died and let's pay our respects now. So my Estonian Mafia glasses kind of got wrecked in that episode. Somehow I managed to drive over it with the excavator. So let's do the proper burial and then continue on with this episode. <clears throat> Rest in pieces, you will be missed. I mean, maybe. Okay, that was kind of weird, but let's focus on this episode now. Some light, perhaps. So in this episode, I will be focusing on finishing the inside walls. Also including doing the window frames on the inside. I recall that you guys kind of liked the window frames I put outside. So I'm gonna do something similar inside. Like I said in my, one of my previous videos or episodes, I'm gonna try to leave this one out as well and including that one also. This one, that one and also this tiny bit I'm planning to cover up with drywall. I was thinking maybe I should put uh, some inside siding but I figured pure white drywall will go very nicely hand in hand with a darker log wall surface. Also I have a bunch of drywall left over from previous projects and that means I don't have to go and buy siding. To be honest, now that I'm saying it, I think that's the primary reason I went with drywall. Yeah, if I don't have to buy anything, then uh, that's okay in my books. Another thing that I need to do is I want uh, the wall to kind of seamlessly continue. And once all of that is nicely completed, then I will do the oil finish. I'm gonna be putting line seed oil on the inside locks. So yeah, those are my goals for this video and let's get to work. And the first thing that I'm going to do is let's start off with this piece here. But it's kind of getting late today, so I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. Didn't see that coming, did you? And removing this piece is kind of harder than uh, it looks like. Sure, I could just get the screws out like that. No big deal. But I also added these stupid nails here. And these are not like puny nails. They're more like railroad nails, but I'm sure I'm going to get it out. You know, screws are worth their weight in gold right about now. So probably looking around 2 million 
euro dollars right here. It's gonna be harder than it looks. Freaking nails are not moving, they're just sinking into the wood. That's never a good sign. I was not joking. had an option for this and I think it's almost gonna work so last year I got up these very wide uh, planks they've been drying for a year now and I think I can fit one of them here so I need to make a bed for that plank but uh, first I'm gonna go prepare the plank like this crack though maybe it's not a big deal I mean all of them have some sort of cracking going on <laughs> this thing was actually able to cut this I'm really impressed by the way if you get something like this, make sure you have a garbage teeth blade on it. I've got through tons of nails and screws with this blade so far and it's still cutting very nicely. I'm actually super impressed how lightweight this thing is right now. I remember when I got it, I couldn't move it by hand, I needed to use the pocket. This thing feels like a balloon now. Just goes to show you how much water there really is in green lumber. Most of it is water. I think the percentage in green lumber for water is around 40 to 60 percent. So yeah, half of the weight of the green tree is just water. So that's pretty interesting. You know, for an unprepared plank. This thing is actually pretty flat, which is very interesting. Usually those things are all sorts of propeller modes.
just like this thing has more unicorn power than my tractor does. You know, this thing is pretty flat. I'm pretty amazed. So I'm not even gonna try to flatten it with my uh, homemade uh, router cheek over there. So I'm just gonna sand it and then this thing is ready. I think it's uh, as good as I can get it. I don't really want to go any deeper because I will be hitting the screws and nails from the other side. Also, I think that would kind of compromise the strength of the joint as well. So I think this is fine. Looks kind of weird though, but I'm also weird. So completely normal. You know what? I bet I can make these two walls look even nicer if I grind them with the sandpaper. I mean, there is a mild difference here. So, might as well. Yeah.
that was fun. But I think it was worth it. Definitely looks a bit brighter. Probably got like tons of dust on the surface, so can't really notice anything. Dust, dust party. So this lock doesn't really wanna go white. There's a bit lighter colors in here and then we got see these reddish layers. I assume these reddish layers are from years of well gaobu or something similar. But it's fine. I mean I can hardly smell the boo anymore, so it's not that big of a deal. I mean if I go deeper and deeper you can see that the white stuff eventually comes out but I would need to go maybe like 10 millimeters to reach this uh, nice white lumber. Probably should do some cleanup before I continue. This is almost as bad as my bedroom. Now the deal with these holes. I'm actually thinking for a while what to put here. Probably the most efficient thing to put here would be that uh, rock wool or mineral wool because that thing will uh, be miles more efficient than a block of wood when uh, insulation comes into play. But I think that would create a situation where mice will just occupy these holes and start multiplying. So I'm gonna hammer in some wooden blocks here, seal it with construction foam. Probably the best option would be to just fill these holes with concrete or mortar. I've seen that done before and that option seems fine as well. At least I can remove the plank very easily if I want to do that one day. Might look like crap, but don't worry. I'm a master at covering crap up. Master crap coverer. That's my specialty. crap anymore. I think with some oil the thing will look really cool. Let's focus on the next part. So next part will be to cover up this wall with some drywall. I'm thinking I'm gonna try to leave these log ends out nicely. We'll see how that goes. The framing for the drywall will probably be will probably be about 100 millimeters thick. That should leave plenty of room for the cable mess I got here. So first things first, got to do some framing. So guys, I've been thinking for a fair bit here now. Should I also apply some oil to this wall? Although it's gonna be completely sealed with some drywall, I think I should still add some oil to this wall as well. 
it can't hurt, right? I mean, oil should be pretty good on wood. Okay, I'm gonna add oil to this wall, that one, and also this tiny bit here. See how it goes. Hopefully it's worth it. Here we go. Now I'm 100% sure that I'm gonna get a bunch of comments saying that you monster, how can you cover up this awesome looking wall? Well, for that, I got one word for you. Uh, 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 yeah, that's the word. Uh, that's like the perfect word to say to any question. So the reason why I don't really want to leave this wall out is is because there are just so many problems with it. Okay, so number one, the sides of the door. How I'm gonna cover that up? That looks like crap. Number two, the cabling. Okay, well, the cabling is my fault, so let's not count that. Number three, there is one log missing on top of this wall, so there is a giant gap there. And number three, uh, the logs actually are not level, so maybe you can notice that the logs kind of crook downwards on both ends. So the logs are not level. Basically this whole section, including that little section there, is made out of logs that I had left from the log pile. So there's nothing original about this uh, wall, it's just a bunch of different logs kind of jam-packed together in a wall. So yeah, it's nothing really special, it's just a bunch of crap that I want to cover up. So yeah, those three are mostly the reasons I want to cover up this wall. I did want to leave out the ends, but uh, this end kind of goes all over the place. There's just so many different size logs put together here, but I still kind of want to leave out the ends. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. Let's see how this goes. What a day. What a wonderful day, guys. Wow. Sell a kidney now to get some fuel. This cabin project has all but decimated my chain collection. I think I started this cabin off with about 15 brand new chains and this is the last chain remaining. One third of the teeth are missing. The hidden nails situations on this cabin. I mean my patience on that matter has just uh, reached orbit. There's really no other way to put it. Definitely worth it. It may look like weird right now, but once this thing is nicely covered with some drywall, it should look okay. And this uh, side is not that bad in the snake mode department, but uh, 
Yeah, let's do this one as well. Fun. So I guess it's uh, worth it. So I'm gonna sand this and then uh, reapply the oil. Just finished oiling like six seconds ago and the thing is already dry. Anyway, next up, the framing. Fun fact here, I used this thing to build the sauna, which was eight years ago. So I've had this thing for a while. Might need a new handle though. This one is mildly worn out. Okay, well that takes care of the framing. So next uh, part would be to install a vapor or water vapor barrier. So that thing usually goes uh, under the final finish with a small air cap. But uh, I'm thinking most likely not gonna install it here. I mean, I'm gonna leave out most of these cabin walls from the inside. So I don't think I will achieve anything by installing a vapor barrier here on this uh, small section. I'm gonna leave this cap behind the drywall completely open. That way nicely air can get behind the drywall and make sure no mold or stuff like that takes hold. I hope. Before I do that though, I'm gonna need to fill all those gaps with some insulation. I wouldn't need to do this if I had that extra log here. Okay, well I got the caps filled nicely. 
I'm gonna try to add some chicken netting here or some uh, steel wire cage. This stuff, I mean. What a mess this looks like. Let's try to kind of make this looking nicer. Bunch of cables. Okay, if you're wondering why did I add this net thing here, well, I'm kind of hoping that it will maybe help with the mice situation. Maybe this will prevent the mice from getting behind this drywall from here somehow. Now, now I'm kind of thinking if I was a mice and went behind this board, found out that this net is blocking me, then I would probably maybe go through the wiring you know what i'm gonna add some fireproof foam to kind of lock everything in place on the corner I think that's gonna do something useful, maybe. Maybe, just maybe, it will slightly annoy the mice, but I don't think this will stop them. Those things are like Russian spies. They can weasel themselves into anything. Anyway, next up, some drywall. I'm gonna install the drywall, but I'm not gonna do the blasterings just yet. I think I'm gonna do the blastering probably next year. try to make it fit as best as I'm able to do. The first piece is gonna be a bit of a bane. Hmm. 
This would be fun. I don't know guys, that's about as good as I can get it, really have zero patience to start over. What a mess. single sheet took me about around three hours or so but I think this was the hardest overall mm, yeah by the way do notes here about drywall sheets that I've learned when driving the screws in make sure you don't drive them past the surface of the drywall it should be pretty much flush nicely with the drywall and another thing is don't put the drywall bottom on any floor or foundation surface. Always leave some type of a gap under there. And this, this gap should be fine. Well guys, everything from here on out is pretty much straightforward. Let's just uh, plow through this part. Gonna finish installing the drywall. And after that, I'm gonna apply oil to the entirety of the log walls. So, yeah. <laughs>
I guess seems about right. You know what? The best thing about this episode so far, it doesn't smell like poo anymore. Now it smells like a really nice seed oil smell. If you're just now joining me, then previously this building was where basically cows, horses, and lambs, also beaks, used to stay and crap all over the place. So this was like 50 years ago. So you guys know what kind of turmoil and pain I went through to clean these logs with the angle grinder and also sanding paper. And I was pretty sure I got all the nails out, but yet I still find nails. You should call this cabin the nail cabin. Like seriously. Nail Gavin. I mean, check that top log out. All those gray areas is a spot where there is a nail in it, for example. So in that log alone, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty, twenty something, like twenty six nails in that log alone. I mean, what the hell? How does that happen? You were either drunk or you had a bunch of nails and you were drunk. But anyway, let's talk about the logs now and how the line sheet oil kind of lightens up the place. Well, not literally, it kind of makes the room a lot more darker because... It kind of makes the room a lot more darker. Some might say it's too dark. I should have used something else on the logs, but but I don't know. I personally like it very much. It's not brown. It kind of turns reddish. I am gonna install some white LEDs here, so I think it's gonna go very nicely hand in hand with those walls. Also, this elm slab after the oiling kind of looks a lot nicer now. Yeah, definitely looks pretty cool. I also added the oil to the line welt I and mean, it smooths it out very nicely. You can see the line welt very nicely just sits between the logs. After applying oil here it even makes it look better. But I don't really know how fire resistant line welt is. And I've heard that line seed oil kind of tends to light itself on fire sometimes. I mean at least it says on the box. Easily lightable material can self ignite. Yeah, that sounds about right. But I'm no expert in that area. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the temperature differences. So currently the floor 9.5. This is reading 10.3. And the line will be actually cooler than the log. Oh, by the way, because a lot of my viewers are from the sunny state of Florida, let's go over the Fahrenheit as well. So the floor is 47, 48, 47.6. Personally, I don't think this will catch on fire or anything. If it does though, it's gonna be a mild inconvenience for me because that means I have to start this project all over. Yeah, I don't really wanna do that. Definitely don't wanna do that. That is bad. But anyway, while I wait for the place to burn down, uh, let's try to continue the work here. Next up would be to install some uh, Siding finish on all the windows and also the door. So this time let's start with the door framing. I think I'm gonna use some alder boards on the door. Alder looks pretty cool.
So alder is pretty much considered a chunk of wood. Mostly nothing really is done out of it. Mostly it's just used as a firewood. But I absolutely love how the alder looks after it has nicely dried out. It has this reddish kind of tone and I think it looks great. One major problem I've noticed with alder is that after this thing dries out, it likes to warp all over the place. Banana mode, propeller mode, you name it. It goes everywhere. But other than that, I think alder is great. The amount of chips I collect from planing is pretty ridiculous. I've only done two boards. And the bag is already almost full. Well, at least the thing is not all over the shop floor. Rather have this than massive amounts of cleanup. I think it looks pretty cool. This should work. Two in one duel. What do you think, guys? Yeah. Well, it's definitely better than the giant ass hole that I had here before. The door is quite deep in there, though. It closes fine, opens fine. You can't go any wider than that, but uh, do you really need it to be any wider than that? I don't think so. It's fine. Okay, well, next up, let's uh, pick this window. Now, because there's no flat surfaces around the window, it's going to be a bit difficult to do. But I'm going to figure something out. Pretty sure I can manage this. Yeah. Maybe it's a bit much. Maybe.
feel warmer already. What a dumbass I am. What a freaking dumbass. Why did I not remove the tape from down there? I mean the window tape. Check this out. Freaking expert. Let's try something. Maybe it will look okay. Most likely, though, I'm gonna screw it up. I mean, this could work. Right? Anyway... Yeah, I think uh, this works. Because I don't have a flat surface due to this wall being, well, a log wall. I can't put any boards here, but I think this works. No idea how to finish the top though. Got this gap here that I don't really like. Putting a board here probably won't solve the problem. It will make it look even weirder. <sighs> right now I don't have any ideas. If I come up with anything, then I'm gonna do it later. If not, then... Help me out here, guys. By the way, I think this super wide, super long bottom board for the window frame works very well. You know, the best part about these things are that they are free. This tree is probably from somewhere around here. So it's also close to home. Hmm, let's do that one next. Leave the bigger boy for last. This window has been insulated very well. Hmm. Perfection. That looks freaking awesome. Why haven't I done this before? This is gold. Definitely gonna get some tight comments about that. And that takes care of this window frame. Yeah, it works. Especially like this um, design here that I did. It fits pretty well. I'm kind of surprised that I haven't thought about this before. 
and I have done a ton of window framing in the past. Mind is playing tricks on me, don't know why. Final window, let's do this. I guess uh, that's about it. Got all the windows and doors nicely framed up. Now all that is left to do is the oiling part. For the oil I'm gonna use the same stuff I used on the logs. But uh, before I do that, quick question about one of those boards. Huh. Somebody is doing something useful around here. Anyway, the question I want to ask. So these boards are a bit spalted. So spalting is a process that happens just before the wood starts to rot. And also it has massive amounts of uh, these bug holes. Now these came straight from the forest, they did not happen on the property or while it was drying. And I'm thinking, is it a good idea to put this board here? I'm not sure if there are any bugs in this board, I'm thinking probably not. Most likely not, but I can't be sure of that. Just in case though, before I installed this board, I did apply some oil to the other side as well. Maybe that will do something useful. Personal opinion though, I think it looks way too cool to be removed. But yeah, let me know guys what you think. So I need to do the oiling now. Definitely looks better with some oil on it. Anyway guys, I'm gonna finish the oiling, do some cleanup. Really annoying buzzing sound. And then uh, let's just wrap this episode up. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Will, will do. Anyway guys, that kind of wraps it up. I think I got pretty much everything that I wanted to get finished in this episode. So this is how the interior was. Now look, personally, I am super stoked here right now. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied how this came out. Let me know guys if you have a favorite part uh, in this episode. My favorite would probably be this uh, Soviet chair. Let the sun shine on the Soviets. Yeah, hero right there. But anyway, let's do a quick recap. So the first thing, what was that? Almost forgot this blank thing here. So behind the blank here, there is a ugly junction or connection of logs. And I covered it up with this blank. I think this uh, came out okay. Next up, we got to clean some logs again. I was utterly covered in dust again. But that's totally normal. I think after the grinding I applied this oil to the logs. I consider the oiling of the walls an absolute win. Because this looks pretty okay. Also I'm very glad that you guys kinda 
wanted me to leave out more logs. So it's completely thanks to you guys that I left these two out as well. And I believe it was completely worth it. It looks pretty okay. After the oiling, I applied the framing and drywall to this small area, including this uh, small bit here. Leaving these logs out was quite annoying, but I managed to pull it off. Personally, I believe once I paint this wall nice and white, it will look even better than it looks right now. Beyond that, I started working on the framing for the windows and this single door. For the door, I used alder and for the windows, I used a combination of birch and elm. So with the birch being here, it kind of points out a bit more from the log walls. So guys, let's kind of wrap this video up now. So in the next episode about this cabin, I will be focusing on the balcony area up there. That is the only remaining wall that does not have any, well, wall. Yeah, it doesn't have any wall. So I want to close that up before winter hits and also finish the entire balcony area. I'm going to immediately start working on that. Yeah, sounds like a plan. But for this episode, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Check these things out. Freaking food. Is anybody hungry?